brain. Thank you, Gary. My glasses are here. They are my brain. Uh, all right. Hey, welcome back, Black Magic TV. And tonight we have yet another um, John Cheeser connection. We got comedian Mike Baldwin. Mike, thanks for joining me. What's up, dude? Uh, Mike and I just met. Um, I've been watching your stuff online. You're hilarious. Thanks. Um, I'm, that, I'm off the clock right now, so I don't promise any. No, you don't have to be funny at all. That's I'm, the best part. This is just like a chill. Uh, hey, I I, uh, I operate on what I call the uh, friends of Bill method, where I kind of just like uh, where you're from, uh, what you did, and then hey, how's it going now? You know what I mean? So, okay. Um, I know you live in Wichita now. Yep. Is that born and raised Wichita? No, born and raised in Independence, Missouri. Okay. Uh, I moved to Wichita in 2020. Uh, my mom got sick. She was living with my grandma. Then my mom died and my grandma's old. And so I'm staying there until she doesn't need me anymore. Right. So I joke, but it's, uh, yeah, it's it's my thing now. Yeah, well, that's cool. Doing I mean, grandma stuff. Yeah, hang it's, out with grandma. And... It's not bad. I don't live with her. I feel like there will come a point that I'll have to. Right. But for now, I live like five minutes away. I can rush over if there's an emergency, but mainly it's like, you know, just chores and stuff. Yeah. Mowing the lawn, raking leaves, picking up prescriptions, stuff like that. Yeah. Watching the Western Channel. Doing things to keep her from the home. Yeah. Oh, I mean, she'll she'll never go. Right. To yeah. A home. We. I. My grandma just passed a, a, about two months ago. My both my grandmas passed this last year, but she was like, had my grandpa died about ten, twelve years ago, and she's been by herself, and uh-huh. like then it got to a point where it was like, okay, like you can't really take care of the house anymore. The yard, you got a big old plot of land, and right? You need to. Oh, I mean, she still carries laundry up and down the stairs every day. Oh, yeah. Stuff like that, that I'm like, this is the kind of stuff that I could help you with. And she's like, oh, no, I, you won't do it right. Yeah, you are. Only, I know, how to, only right. I know how to do my laundry. <laughs> yeah, that's terrific. But, yeah, no, it's not bad. I like living there. It's a cool comedy scene there. And uh, it's a good, you know, central place to travel from and stuff. And I, I, I mean... I don't know so much about the comedy scene. Um, I've been sort of inundated into it via uh, Cheezer. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, Wichita's really taken over for like the music stuff from yeah. us because all of the music venues have closed. So all the mid-sized shows, there's all these bands that I, I want to see. And then I see that they're on tour and it's like, Wichita. Cool. Well, like... <laughs> Six years ago, that would have been here. <laughs> like, Valid, yeah. Well, to me, Kansas City to Wichita is just a nothing drive anymore. Right, because you do it a lot, I've right? done it so many times. I'm like, oh, two hours, 40 minutes. Boom. That's uh, like a, a quarter of an audio book. Yeah. Do you, do you do a lot at the comedy club? Do you... Do you do a lot of shows here there? in Kansas City? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, not as often as I would like, but as often as a comedian can, really. Like, yeah, I'm friends with Dustin. We started open mic night in like the year 2000 within like a week of each other. OK, we aren't sure which one of us started first, but we know that we were both there in the very beginning. And so we right. go back years, you know, decades. I lived with him in L.A. for a couple of years. I lived with him in Kansas City for a couple of years. Um, yeah, good dude. And then he was like, I think I'm going to open a club. And I was like, that sounds like something that would benefit me so much. If, yeah, so if you, please, please do. do. Yeah. Cause that's where your special was shot at. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I'd like to get Dustin on because back in the day when I was in bands, he was always, he was like, a band guy too. Yeah. He was always around uh-huh. in, in the Westport scene. He was always sort of like, yeah, he had the... We were uh, all blended back then. They were the 45th Street Porch Band, because that's where we lived, on 45th right. Street. And they would sit out on the porch and play music on Friday nights. And they would do <laughs> band practice and shit in our living room. And my room was, like, right off of the living room. And the first month there, I was just like, I don't know how I'm going to live with this. And then yeah. after that, they're like, all right, band practice. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to take a nap. I'll see you guys later. And yeah, I would just sleep through so rock music and yeah. shit. Yeah, it was actually... Uh, it's like... a uh, 
uh, skill that I have now is I'm like, I don't care if people are screaming and yelling, like I can fall asleep. Right. So, yeah. oh yeah, I meant to say, uh, so I probably should have said this before <clears throat> I sat in this chair, but there is a 99% chance that I do not have bed bugs. Oh, I saw your post. But the but the possibility is still there. Yeah, I yeah, don't have yeah. any new, everything's clean. Dude, I went I, to, uh... I, I stayed in a hotel on Friday <laughs> night. And I woke up and I just had like a mark on my elbow. Yeah. And I was like, well, what is that? That's weird. And I didn't really think anything of it. And then uh, got back to my hotel after the show that night and went to sleep, woke up the next morning and I had like a hundred of them on me. Yeah. So just the thought of like a hundred bugs crawling on me while I was, or yeah. one that just made its rounds or something. I don't right, know. Right, but, right. but dude, I went through everything. I, I got all the bug bombs and sprays and yeah uh diatomaceous earth do you know what that is yes like that stuff is uh is pretty impressive yeah like it's it's just seashells ground up into a powder basically but they are so my parents i i had i spent my 20s as like a criminal and then like at, at the end of my 20s i was looking at a pretty long prison sentence and got sober and like whipped it around. But I, after I got out of that, I've been living in a van and then I was like, went to live with my parents. And at one point they had this horrible bed bug problem. Was it a gift from you and the van? No. Uh -huh. it, Cause I was, there was a jail stint in between there. Okay. But we can't figure it out. And like, I did all this research and it's like this weird thing where they're like, we don't know where these come from. Yeah, they're well, just and, like and they, they just exist, and it could have been like because they live out in like the countryside mm -hmm. of Wyandotte County. It could have been like w the animal brought it by the house. It wanted the warmth, so it went inside, and then boom! Next thing you know, you've got an infestation. Right, if you don't notice it. You yeah, know I mean? all it takes is one or two, I guess, or one pregnant one. Yeah, to get in your house, and yeah, it's a. Uh, I was I've obviously watched hours of video on it right. in the last few days. <laughs> yeah. So let me tell you everything you I know. A rogue scholar on no, but luck. like uh, mosquitoes suck your blood. But the way they do it is they it, sort of like uh, when you see in movies when people inject something, how they like push it, pull it out a little bit, and then push it back in. You know, yeah. so it mixes more, and that's how mosquitoes suck your blood. Is they like a syringe, sort of, yeah. But but bed bugs don't <laughs> do it that way. Like they're all sucking. They're not yeah. blowing, so they don't spread disease. Is the point? Yeah. The way mosquitoes can. So governments don't give a fuck about them. There's no. Oh, sorry. Can I cuss? Yeah, you can do whatever uh, you want. There's no like national. We got to protect people because it's just an it's an annoyance. Yeah, you know? it's just an annoyance. And most people don't even react to them, so they don't wake up in the morning and have an itchy elbow. So they just get eaten while they're sleeping, and then just go about their day. So if they bring one with them, they're not even thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, they don't you know? even realize. Yeah, it it, <clears throat> it take it took like. I was a, I was the porch bandit because there was no extra rooms at the house. So I was on like the old screened in porch, right, is where I was living. And I had like I had had a few marks on me and but it was like, oh, well, I'm out in the grass a lot. You know, maybe I'm at a swap meet. There's some mosquitoes, something. And then one day I saw I had my daughter before she, I had custody of her. She was in Wyoming with her mom and she was visiting. She was probably six. And we're like there and it's like wait well what is that and then all of a sudden you realize like oh shit like it's uh there's a bug and then you're like oh and then you lift up the mattress and you're like oh my god Ugh. there's bugs everywhere <laughs> and then it's immediately i think i went through like four mattresses Ugh. at their house i was like i can't do this anymore it's driving it drove me crazy trying and, to get rid of them i and i haven't even had like i don't think any got into anything of mine. I You're don't probably think I, good if you noticed it at the hotel and right. then got home and then immediately sprayed everything. You should be fine. Yeah, no, I did everything. My biggest worry was, because I even got a bug bomb and put it in my car. Yeah. And then I sprayed alcohol and diatomaceous <clears throat> earth and all that stuff all over in there. 
just to be safe. But then on the way here, I'm just like, when, is that a new one? Oh, or yeah, is dude. That, yeah. <laughs> I'm like looking in the mirror. Are they, that's the mind playing tricks on you, dude. Because that's what, like, I've stayed in shitty hotels for the last 20 years, you know? Like, yeah. anytime, if the, a lot of comedy clubs will put you up in a nice hotel. And then when yeah. that happens, then great. But a lot of places, you just got to get your own room. And I'm not shelling out 150 bucks when there's a 49.99 place down the road. You yeah, know? I saw your Instagram post where you're like, "Well, they gave me the 200 dollars a day per diem. Right. I spent 49 dollars of it, uh-huh. and now I got all eight up." <laughs> yeah, dude, it was just uh, I don't remember where my story was going, but yep, bed bugs. But you got sucks. 300 bucks to buy. Um, fucking bed bug killing supplies I, I spent about forty dollars on bed bug killing supplies and yeah profited an extra 200 and something dollars that's not so, a bad night yeah i mean it's all spent already anyway yeah, like every sure. amount of is. money that i get is just like all right now i can pay this overdue bill yeah like now this company won't call me again for another six months no i would say i was gonna say less than one month when the next one is due. yeah when you know? the next one's due and they're like hey we noticed you got back on track last month what the fuck what the fuck happened are you now you're full-time comedy comedy yeah yeah and how many years have you been doing that mike uh well i started open mics in 2000 and i say I haven't had a real job since probably 06, 07, okay. something like that. Wow. You've so, been really out here doing it. I mean, it's my only job, but that doesn't mean that I'm making good money. You know what I mean? Well, no, like, I mean, the term starving artist is definitely true. Like, yeah, but you're surviving and you're doing what you love. Correct. And that's almost priceless. Uh, Yeah. I mean, I, I at least once a week, I think like, especially on a week off where I'm just sitting on my ass for three days in a row, I'm like, I could be working a part time job during yeah. these three days. It'd probably help a lot. But then I got into uh, this conversation with somebody a week or two ago, and I was saying, like, I would like to have like a factory job or learn like a, how to weld or something like that. But then I was like, but you got to pass a drug test to do that so then i would have to quit smoking weed and then if i quit smoking weed then that would just make me more motivated to do comedy well yeah and i was like really i just probably just need to quit smoking weed regardless but you know we'll worry about that later i'm like i wanted to quit smoking weed so i could become a welder but i'm like no i just need to focus on comedy like when i want to be a welder when i don't have I can look at my schedule six months from now and know how hard I worked or or I can look at my schedule today and know how hard I was working six months ago. You know what I mean? Like, cause most gigs you'll get between six months to a year down the road. Um, if you're planning ahead and sending out the emails and all that stuff. And I really only send those emails out when I look at my schedule and I don't have anything for the next month. And that's when I'm frantically emailing everybody. everybody, Like, yeah, like, hey, I'll take work down the road, but if you got a cancellation this week, I'll fucking do it, you know? And uh, But I tell myself, like, if I would just send those emails every week anyway, instead of waiting until it's right. important, you know, then I'd probably have a lot more work. But I don't know, man. We like, all do it. The procrastination is just the, it's embedded it's, in human DNA, I think. It's just that there's so much to the job like i always think about eddie murphy like he was just a kid doing open mic night and or you know he was probably doing real shows at this point but somebody just came and saw him and was like we're gonna make this kid a star and then they get him like a wardrobe department you know like drivers and agents and all this stuff people around him to help him in every aspect so the only thing he has to do is go do his comedy you know and now it's not like that at all it's like i have to be all of those things and I'm none of those things. I'm yeah. I'm good at doing comedy, and that's it. Everything else in the business is like, I say it in every town I go to, and nobody's ever hit me up. But I'm like, I just need somebody to call places and send emails for me. And because it's it's a lot better 
if a third party is saying, dude, this guy's fantastic, yeah. than it is for me to email and be like, dude, I'm fantastic. That yeah. just makes me sound like a dick. And then I try to downplay it and I'm like, I'm kind of funny or whatever. And they're yeah. like, well, we don't want that. We want someone who, who's fantastic. Yeah. So it's all just, I don't know. Yeah, it's, comedians not known for their um, egos, uh, like in, in the sense of like, not very good self talkers. The like when you talk to a comedian, they usually like, I'm kind of, uh, yeah, I, you, are you, oh, you're funny? Oh, uh, well, I don't, uh, right, kind of. Or people are like, man, you were really great tonight. And I'm like, all right, thanks. Yeah, like, I don't, uh, you know, but that's good because you're just humble, you know, that's humbling. Yeah, I, uh, I know what you mean though. Like, doing this, like, I've had to learn how to, um, you know shoot with a camera and then realize like the camera I had wasn't what I needed and then had to hustle up to get this camera. It and then it was nice. like, shit, now I need lights. And e then after a while I was like, looks... well, I, got, I need actual microphones. And then one day when me and my kid moved in this house, I was like, shit, we, I got to build a set. And then so her and I took off like painting this wall, you know, and then some friends made that sign for me. And the rest of this is just my crap that I have, you know, but it's been like a whole thing where it's the same thing where it'd be like, man, this whole thing would be, but th then I got to shoot it. I've had to learn how to edit video. Now yeah. I'm trying to learn how to edit audio properly. Then mm. I have to learn how to put them together. And then you got to learn all this other shit. And I'm like, dude, if I just had somebody who could do that part for me, we'd be golden. Right. And I'm starting to do shit for other people to where like, I've learned how to like live stream events and make it sound professional. And mm. like Aaron Scarborough has been doing a show. I like that guy. Yeah. And uh, so Aaron comes. That's the Aaron wall right there. That's the, the just a bland orange wall that his bright red hair just reflects off of. He sits there and rants about. This week he was ranting about Fidel Castro. Oh so. uh, yeah, <laughs> doing what Aaron does. You're gonna go off on a rant. <laughs> yeah, Castro is where you start. Where you start? Yeah, that's where you want to start with. Um, when did you? So you were in can you were in Independence mm -hmm. in Little Methlehem. Yeah. Uh I got uh, yep. Yep. Got, got history with that. Yeah, who doesn't? Me too. Hey. Eskimo Bros. Mes Meskimo Bros. <laughs> um what when did you decide did you go from here to LA? Um no, well, I stayed here when was L.A.? Probably 2011 or something. So, I mean, I did comedy for a good 10 years plus a little bit before I... And I only went to L.A. because Dustin Kaufman was already living out there. Right. And so I went out to visit, I think. I ended up staying a week or two, and then I came back home, and then I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, I could just had I could have just stayed. And then yeah. I turned around and went back shortly thereafter. And wow. uh, I got my own place for a while. I... Got really lucky, actually, uh, found, and I mean, I don't think you could do this now, but it was 2012 or so when I physically moved there, um, and I found a little $500, they called it a bachelor, so it was like a studio apartment and then a shared bathroom with like four other people, you know? Right. Uh, so that part took some getting used to, but uh Still, 500 bucks a month in L.A. wasn't Crazy. bad at all, you know, and I had my own spot by myself. But then that was also at the beginning of weed being legal and uh, Netflix on the Internet and all that shit. So, I mean, I just spent so much time just hanging out at home, smoking weed and being right. like and like there it was all open mics and guest spots and stuff for me in L.A. So I wasn't making any money there. So I had to go on the road to make money. So I would leave for three weeks, you know, make my month's worth of bills and then come back and be like, well, I don't want to go to some open mic night. Like <laughs> I just got done doing three weeks of headline gigs, right. you know? So I stayed there for about a year and then I was like, I'm just wasting my money here. And now were you already a, a touring comic when you went out there? Were you already doing road gigs? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was featuring and stuff. I wasn't right. he headlining as much. Oh, yeah. Does the do the mics pick up dog? Noises? Oh, they absolutely do. This is uh, this is what happens when you ask your teenage daughter, "Hey, could you keep the dog in your room?" <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so you were already you were featuring but not headlining when you went out. I there. mean, everybody's headlining a little bit here right. and there. You're, you're, you know, you're doing, but, uh, but I was mostly doing uh, funny bones and improvs, which there were like thirty across the country at the right. time, and and those were good years between I would say like 2010 and 2016 or so. I would get one email a year from the guy who booked all of the funny bones and improvs, and it would just have thirty dates on it. And he's like, you want these dates? And I'd be like, yes. And then my whole year was filled, you know? And then around 16 or 17, then comedians started bringing their own openers a lot more. So right. like the famous guys would be like, no, I don't need a feature. I'm, I'm bringing my own. And then it's a matter of like, well, I, now I got to be friends with somebody. Like, yeah, I just want to do this because I'm, I'm talented. Yeah. You know, I don't want to do it because I'm friends with this guy. But yeah, so then it that it's been a struggle actually since about sixteen or so. I was definitely I was doing better in those few years than I have been these last few years. Right, and I don't know if that's politics or not, but it's yeah. like uh, it, just the ebb and flow of the business, I guess. Yeah, it seems like it's uh, it does feel like that. Like it's become a like instead of who's the best. It's like who's the coolest to hang out with? Who, who do I who, with a famous guy? It's who do you know? Right. And then that guy is going to. It won't matter to him because the people are coming regardless. Yeah. So if you fucking suck, like it doesn't matter because people are just going to That'll be the thing like, oh, his opener is shit. And I'm sure some of them do that on purpose. Right. Because mm -hmm. if you got a shit guy opening for you. It makes it a lot easier. Then it for makes you. it easier for you to kill as to where if. You know, you got some silent killer coming in, being the feature that you don't know and you've shown up. Like, next thing you know, you're sitting there going, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, it's pro it's a little bit of all of that, you know? Like, I mean, the good, really good comics are like, no, I like someone funny and strong to open for me because right. it sets a high bar for the show and, I, and then I got to bring it, you know? But there are plenty of people that are like, I don't want anybody too strong in front of me. Or yeah. like, uh, uh, what was his name? Like, John Panette. You know who that is? Yeah. He did the like bu buffet. Th you eat all our food like that yeah. whole thing back in the day. And he would never uh, he didn't like fat guys opening for him because he was a fat guy because he was a fat guy and he was going to go up there and do fat jokes. And other fat guys are doing basically fat the jokes. same yeah. fat jokes. And he's like, no, I don't want that. You know, like no I, fat guys, <laughs> like let's let a lady up there talk about her stuff or whatever. Yeah. And then I'll go up and wow them with my fat guy jokes. Yeah. It's a, it's a weird, it's a, it's sort of a weird nomadic business. Dude, it, it really is. And it sucks because number one, people hardly ever remember your name. Right. They don't remember your jokes. So they try to tell people about you and just fail. You know what I mean? And then the other hard part is like when I started in 2000 or so, we had sold out open mic nights. Like, yeah. that's how big comedy was in the in the late 90s, early 2000s. People didn't care who the comedian was. They just knew that this building provided good comedy. Right. So they would flock to it uh, every night of the week, dude, that uh, Stanford's and Westport was. Oh, yeah. Was it's no hopping. different than the music scene then, right? right? Any night of the week, you could go to a bunch. I, I People don't believe me. I could go watch a, a touring punk rock band. From the time I was 15 till I was about 22 in this town, every night of the week, I could go see a different on tour punk rock band at some sort of a music. Mm -hmm. group. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and then I guess the Internet or whatever. I mean, really, it wasn't the Internet in general. It was more TikTok, I guess. And then Instagram reels and YouTube shorts and all that. Like, yeah, people started getting millions of followers and then they started working the clubs. Right. And most people, if you ask a, a comedy audience, how many people have never seen a comedy show before? At least half of them will clap unless it's, you know, a club where they just have Regular repeat regulars. Come, regulars. Right. Yeah. But in, in general, most people are this is their first time ever seeing live comedy. So they don't know how it works. And so if they if the guy with two million followers says, hey, I'm going to be in your town, then that's when they jump up and go, "Ooh, let's go see let's him. Go see it. And then that guy doesn't have 
20 years of comedy experience. So he's not going to do as well as someone who does. Right. And the audience feels that, you know? If it's somebody really famous, then they don't care as much. They just like to see the person that they like, you know? But yeah. also, they haven't seen comedy, so they don't know how to compare this guy to, to other comedians. Else, right. Yeah, and, and it's like he talked for an hour, and yeah, we had like three good laughs, and it's like, dude, that's horrible. Yeah, like you should have had a hundred in that hour, but they don't know that. So I don't know. It's it's everything's I've, just different. I've been blessed to see. I've I've been a comedy fan for a long, long time, and then early on, I had a buddy like a lot of. I hear a lot. Of, you hear both things. I a buddy turned me on to Kill Tony nine years ago when it started. Yeah, which got me into underground mm -hmm. liking. Oh, let me see these people that don't have specials. Like, let me hear what they say. And I do dig it because you can find good comics. Like, it's a weird thing because sometimes it's people that aren't comics, and then sometimes it's people who are and you're like oh shit like this guy's hilarious let me find him mm -hmm. but i got to see at the improv i've seen charlie murphy which was fucking awesome yeah that was post Chappelle show i saw Polly shore like four different times i always like i've always i've always that's like a child thing right from the 90s like, mm -hmm. you were a Polly shore guy but uh joey diaz that's like probably the best show i've ever seen at yeah. a comedy club like being this close to him because he played the theater here and i refused to go it's like seeing a band in a theater. I'm like, I'm I'm cool. I don't want to see comedy in a at the uptown. Yeah, like, that doesn't sound fun to me. It's not. It's not the best setting. No, for because comedy. it's going to be a, a bunch of people who have never been to a comedy show before. Yeah, and, and you're going to spend half the time explaining to somebody why they have to shut the fuck up. Right. It's it's like, and also like you're just going to ruin that. Like I'd like to keep, you know. That memory of seeing, like, being so close I could touch him and watching him kill at the improv is, like, that's probably one of the best comedy shows I've seen. Hmm. Until tonight, when I go to Hillsiders. Yeah, we'll see. And see you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the the place, though. I've never, I don't think I've ever been inside there. Oh, it's cool. Um, Unless it's an old place. You know place Artie? That... You know the 403 Club? No, I don't. He was a pinball bar. Artie used to be a bartender at like Davies Uptown back in the day, and okay. but it's in the original spot. The bar is old as shit. It's been there since my grandpa hung out there. All right, um, when he was a teen, like a late teenager, like it was a bar then. Well, so it's it has old. It's all. It's got a lot of history in it. And Logan redid it all with shit he found in the cellar. So he found all these old light fixtures and hung them back on the wall. They're like all vintage stuff from like the 60s and 70s. Hmm. So it's cool. He's It's got a good vibe. And John's like sort of been training everyone like because they've been doing it so often now that mm -hmm. like, hey, these are comedy shows. Like You come in here. And act, it's a comedy show. So yeah. you got to shut the fuck up. And it's a comedy show. All know? right. Well, so it's good. It should be good. We'll you, see. You'll dig it. I'm. Uh... If not, you just go down the street, and mug a couple people, go back to Wichita, you're good. Nice. No part time job needed. You can just hit the old. Uh... How many people does it hold? Or how many people will. Be... Uh, I mean, there's times where there's a pretty decent crowd in there. I mean, it could hold. Fuck. I, I, asses to elbows on a, on a Friday night. You could. I mean, there'll be over 100 people in that place. So okay. It's, it's, it has a weird layout, but it works. And they've John's been growing like a scene of people that come to the comedy shows there. Right? All right, because well, there's a, it's a uh, sit up higher. Is that all right? Yeah, go ahead, do whatever you got to do. I've been fucking chilling too long. Yeah, I've been like now you're talking about comedy. You got me like all right, let's fucking let's talk about comedy. Let's get ready for the show me. so they can see my face. Yeah, so they can see that. Do Beautiful they see my face. my feet in this video also? Oh uh, yeah, somewhat. I'm self conscious about my fucking plaid socks. Oh, don't be. Very, that's like, uh, what do you got, Doc Martens on? Yeah, but I never wear them. I'm only wearing these because my tennis shoes were still damp from, from, the, uh, from the, the washing. The yeah. washing, yeah. No, nah, you look fucking great, man. So I was scared to put them on because they say, like, the only things that definitely kill bed bugs are temperature and... Steam. Uh, well, that's temperature, yeah. basically. And uh, I don't remember the other one, but that, basically. Basically. Well, in the diatomaceous earth and stuff. But yeah. a lot of them, like, even poison and stuff, 
They've evolved past it. Yeah. And this video I watched explained it well. It's like, yeah, you poison and, and it kills 90% of them. That 10% that are left are only left because they are immune to it. Yeah. So then they have babies that are immune to it. And it doesn't take long before the whole population is like, oh, that shit, that don't bother me none at all. Yeah, I got some shit out there that's like... You know, just, and now as we're talking about it, I'm like, mm. right, it's dude, like, this is my last, like, yeah, <laughs> my last four days. I've just been like, what is that feeling? As I'm wearing a wheel, wool shirt being like, why am I itchy? I thought about shaving my beard even because I was like, there could be, I don't think there's any in there, but yeah, hot shower to got them out. Oh man. They don't I, tend to stick on you. Like you might catch one on like your pant leg or something. Yeah. But like on your body, like once you get up and moving, they tend to like jump off skedaddle yeah because they yeah. like they what they like is the bed right the bed that's why the they that's the thing the bed is the comfort zone it's the kill zone yeah because they can lurch up inside that mattress and then when you they know at night when you know the freaks come out at night when you're in there sleeping they come out to get that fucking sweet sweet nectar and then they go back into hiding before you fucking, mm -hmm. you know, they're probably intelligent alien life forms that we just don't even realize. I it. think that about a lot of bugs and birds and stuff. Every yeah. time there's a gnat flying around, I'm like, wait, are you trying to give me a message or yeah. no? Okay. He's just... saying to me, like there's been times where there's like flies and they're like, they come and they're like chill and you're like, wait, are you trying to talk? <laughs> Same thing. I feel that way about squirrels too. Yeah. Like sometimes squirrels where it's like, what are you doing here, guy? Like, I've heard the conspiracy that, like, birds aren't real. Yeah. And I know that that real birds exist. But I also know that the technology exists to make a fake bird. Fake bird, yeah. Put some microphones and cameras in it and just fly it around wherever you want, you know? Yeah. Like, just how often people. are people going to be like, wait, is that real? Is that a real bird? Yeah. The, the weird conspiracies that we have these days are... Oh, you know, I love remember them. when it used to just be like, did the government kill Kennedy? And now it's like, we're going, are we even in a solar system? Yeah. Are we, <laughs> is this even, or what is this? Are we inside of a, are we just NPCs in a Grand Theft Auto game? I mean, we could be, we could be in the millionth simulation. Like, yeah. Like a, a civilization could have made a simulation that their population went into and then within that simulation they could have evolved and made another simulation that that whole population went into like yeah. and we could be a million levels down in that so we yeah. die and we just i saw a thing i don't know if it was a meme or what but it was like wouldn't it be weird if you like when you were 90 and you died in your hospital bed like the moment after you died, you woke up and you were like a teenage alien holding a bong and you just looked over and your friend was like, did you feel that? Yeah. Like, wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> You'd be like, oh my God, I think I did. Yeah. It all feels so real. I'm, I, where, have, where have I been? <laughs> you know? Yeah, who knows? It could be that. I just know, like, I don't... I don't think the earth is flat, but I also know that the people who insist that it's round have lied about a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So anytime it, and the COVID thing pointed that out a lot, anytime the science community says it's true. All right. Just quit asking questions about it. You, you idiot. That yeah. makes me be like, wait a minute. Yeah. Is it flat? Like, that's what makes me question it even more. Because yeah, I don't, uh, like, what's the proof? Like, they have pictures that that astronauts took. Who were they working for? The government. Also, I, I saw an interesting thing with a guy talking about how we technically, we physically can't go into space. Through, like, the Van Allen belt or yeah, whatever it is. because of all the garbage we've sent into space that just, like, whips around the planet. And like is it would be like impossible to get past it. And same thing, I don't think we went to the moon. I think that was Yeah. That's all I mean, how, what better way to fucking start off the Cold War and be like, hey, we made it to the moon, bitch. Yeah, so we Fuck can easily commies. make it to the other side yeah, of the planet. We can we can make it rocket. right over there with this rocket, even though we probably like, is that even real? I don't <laughs> like know. You know, they threaten this nuclear war all the time, but it's like that thing where it's like, yeah, no, I got him. Oh, you want to see him? I can't show him to you. but I, <laughs> I got that Babe Ruth rookie card, but I won't show it to you. You know, it's like, who knows, man? Who knows what's... 
I don't believe a fucking word any of them say, but COVID got a lot of people. And that was one where I just sat back and my doctor, I had had a heart attack and my doctor was like, yeah, don't get that shot. dude." I'm like, <laughs> okay. He's like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one specifically for people that have what you have. And I'm like, okay. And then hindsight, I'm like, yeah, that, the doctor really had my back on that one. Yeah. For all the freakazoids that were like, if you have a doctor telling you, Again, like, hey, they said, don't do that, but we're going to change your diet. We're going to exercise. We're going to do these other things, and you're going to be fine. And I said, okay, so I did all those. But if you got a doctor that's just like, nah, take these pills and take this shot, and that's right. all you can do, it's like. That's what a lot of them are nowadays. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not the doctor I'm going to keep going They're just to pill to. pushers, yeah, you know. dude, it's wild. But they get money for that. and But it's that's like any other profession. You know, it was torn during COVID where – Half of the people were like, I don't know about this thing. And the other half were like, do what we say. And and the I don't know about this thing, people got silenced. Yeah. You know? So I, that's uh, why I, I just kept putting it off. When it first came out, I was like, I'm going to wait a little bit. And then I got booked at a comedy club. And uh, the guy that uh, one of the guys that I was working with was like, I'm not going unless everybody's vaccinated. And I was like. Well, I'm uh, I that seems that's a weird pressure, you know. Yeah. I was like I'm not going to go get this thing I don't know about just so you'll work with me. And I was like, "No." And the owner was like, "Just fucking tell him you're vaccinated." And I was like, "I'll say that I am, but I'm not I don't I, now I'm stubborn and now I don't want to do it." Teenagers. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I I was glad I didn't, and then I got I screamed at a lot over masks. Mm -hmm. I spent the entire pandemic. I have like custom a couple old custom vans, and I spent the entire pandemic with my girlfriend at the time. Like I did, I worked the whole time because I I do body repair, so I money was not a problem for me. Mm -hmm. And I just like it was like fucking the greatest thing ever. No one was out, and I just had free reign to like fucking cruise the city in my cool ass old van and not be bothered by people and not have every idiot pulling up next to you like trying to take a when you drive an old car people want to take photos of you all the time yeah it's like hey that's cool man but can you like you're driving the other car like you're gonna don't run into me like that's my fear is like somebody's gonna try to take a photo and they're just like they drive past you going <laughs> he's like fuck dude but i i enjoyed the pandemic it was I kind of did too. It was very peaceful. It was good timing as far as the rest of my life went. My mom got sick right in March of 2020. And uh, and I was like, I got work and stuff, you know, but that sucks. Like, and it was the very beginning of, of cancer, you know, right. so it wasn't, she wasn't bedridden or anything. Right. She was just like, I got to start doing this stuff now. And, and I, at first I was just like, all right, well, I'll come visit when I can. And then like the next day, then the president's like, we're shutting the world down. And I was like, well, I guess I'm coming right now. Guess I'll just break my lease and yeah. move on down there. I was like, all of my stuff just canceled. So I've got, I'm all yours, you know? And yeah, came down here pretty much immediately. I stayed for about a week, uh, at my grandma's with her and my mom. And then I was like, yeah, fuck it. I will just cancel my lease. I'm going to get an apartment down here and I want to be close during this whole thing. And right. she lasted about one year uh, of just like steady degradation. You know, right. yep. it went from like, oh, my back hurts to like having to hold her arm when she walked. And then she had a cane and then a walker and then a wheelchair and then yeah. couldn't get out of bed. And it was just a, it was, I don't know. And the whole time the doctor's being like, yeah, we don't know. Like we're trying our best, and it's like yeah. I don't know, man. Like, doesn't doesn't seem that. It, way. Well, it, it I compare it to the COVID thing, yeah. where that they're like, no, we just take this thing and we put it in your body, and you're yeah. like, well, what's it doing? And they're like, this is just the thing that goes in your body. That's all I was taught. Yeah, and then there's some people like I know a guy that's got uh, brain cancer. And there he he didn't have very long to live at all, and he did this experimental thing and shit. That was like five years ago, you know. Another friend, his brother got diagnosed with like stage three colon cancer, and the doctor's like, "Yeah, well, now with this thing and this thing and this thing, shit." I mean, I'm I'll get, I'm telling you right now, there's like 90 percent survival rate on this for you. And I'm going, dude. In the past, if somebody told me they had stage three colon cancer, I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, I don't got much time left with this guy. Right. So. 
it feels like sometimes I have another friend whose mom passed suddenly, but I feel it was like one of those situations where she was on Medicaid. So it was like, did you know that you had like cancer and they like couldn't do anything because of the insurance or did you like, did they not tell her because it was like past the point of no return and they just didn't want her to like, hmm. you know, deal with that. Yeah. Cause like woke up one day and she had gone in the night and it's like, but she kept having pneumonia and shit. And like, and that's why I have my grandpa got, got a pneumonia shot, got pneumonia a month later. Next thing you know, Oh, you got total cancer in your body. Stage four. It's just like, total cancer. Whoa. Like how does that? And he went quick. Like it was like months mm-hmm. where he went from like, you know, being this tough army dude, ex army guy that still worked, uh, trained bird hunting dogs to like, you know, just like you said, I'm I'm picking them up out of the car at the family reunion, putting them in a wheelchair, right? And it's eighty degrees outside, and he's shivering cold. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, damn. Yeah, it's like, sad, man. Yeah, but it's, that's life. You it know? is. It's just part of it. You know. Yeah, it's a it it. At least we take care of them more now in their later years, as opposed to when we were hunters, gatherers and all that shit, you know, because then it'd just be like, all right, well, we got to walk 10 miles every day and grandma can't make it. So we're just going to leave grandma here. Yeah. And we're going to keep going. And then grandma would survive as long as she could, you know, probably a few days or whatever. You'd leave her some food and now then 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 the animals would get her, you know? Yeah, it's uh. I don't know. Life is weird, man. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I had a buddy. He's like on the cut. I just turned forty, and he's almost forty. And I was like, "Oh, just wait till you you'll once you become forty, you're gonna be get real interested in the genealogy of your family." <laughs> and so I like took off because I inherited a bunch of stuff from my, uh, like I got this like r- my great grandpa had a farm down in uh, outside of Osage Beach, and his name's Benjamin Franklin McDowell. And uh, he died when I was like nine, I think, nine, eight or nine. So I knew him, you know, and I remember him because he would be at the family reunion in the fucking wheelchair. He like didn't talk ever. (laughs) You know what I mean? He was almost like uh, in the great outdoors when they're taking photos with the dead guy. Uh Like that's my great grandpa, the family (laughs) reunion. But uh, I started tracing it back and it's just wild to watch is like, you know, I'm like back to like the 1200s in Scotland. Really? Now. Yeah, dude. I was like able to go like true lineage of like father, son, father, son, father, son. But it's like some of them people live for to be 50. Some of them live to be like 90 back in the back hundreds of years ago. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, you just never. There's no. No, there's, there's no, no code to it. It just. Yeah. It just well, and is even what the, it is. The, when they say like uh, average life uh expectancy or whatever a lot of that is uh babies dying you know yeah so if a guy lives to be 90 and a baby dies on day one average life expectancy is 45 right between that group of humans you know so and most of it was that or women dying during childbirth when they're 16 to 25 or whatever you know yeah like that it doesn't mean that people didn't live to be 100 back then it just meant right so many other young people were dying also but it's just that perception we have there's like there's no way they live to be that old right it's like no they were old men when they were 35 yeah it's like no they were old men when they were a hundred right like it's it's pretty wild it's cool to like trace all that shit back and like i've been able to surprisingly find a lot of shit out because does it change the way you feel and when you, you wake up and you're like i got fucking irish blood flowing through me or whatever it is uh well, it's uh, it's Celtic royalty, so I do feel a little. I feel a little. I started like putting my pinky out now when I drink my hot tea. Yeah, you know that's... because I found that out. Just no, it's just it's just a cool thing to know. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's interesting because if you're if your family, you know, it's cool to like know where like how we got here. Like we came to like South Carolina. And then from then, like the Civil War broke out, and then after the Civil War, we ended up in Southern Missouri. And then, uh, you know, prior to that, they had been in like Scotland, and then in the Lowlands, and then at one point went to Iowa. At one time, there was like a a, a cat from our family that fucking went to Canada. 
So, like, in the 1400s, this dude goes to Canada and lives in Canada. And I'm like, what the... So, he must have been a fur trader or something. You know what I mean? Was, that's, was Canada... And, Canada's huge fur... Uh, no, but, I mean, it wasn't even separated then, though, was it? There wasn't Canada and America in the 1400s. It was just No, a it was fucking... just a big piece of land. But it was what would have been uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. Because they tell huh. you, like, where it would have been. Right. But it had to be part of the... Uh, Fur trading, the fur stuff, trading the stuff. revenant shit yeah have you seen that movie yeah the revenant and then jason momoa has a show about it i can't remember what it's called about fur trading about fur trading i yeah. don't know but that makes me think of the jason momoa show uh called c have you seen that i haven't but I, I it looks it looks fucking pretty good it really it's well done yeah uh yeah i'm three seasons into it now and it's like it's sort of like everything else. Like the idea is like, man, this is crazy. And then by the third season, it's like, but I love this person instead of this person. And I'm like, but I don't give a fuck about this. Yeah. I want to know the story of the blind struggle and all yeah. that shit. But yeah, it's pretty it's like good. Blind samurai, right? Uh, it's not, not a samurai. It's set like 500 years in the future. And so like t uh, today... Uh, there's some disease that's going around and every baby that's born is born blind. So 500 years in the future, every human being alive is blind. blind. So they've got like strings tied between their huts and shit that they use to like help themselves like walk around. They just oh, listen. Wow. They can like feel body heat better. Like it's like they say, you know, like you can uh, your s other senses are improved and but then the story is like uh, a few kids are born here and there who are like, what's that over there? And they're like, how do you know what over there is? You know, like yeah. you have this weird they can power. See. Yeah, yeah. Kids that wow. can see. And so they call them witches and shit and they try to hunt them down and kill them. And <laughs> what the fuck? Because they're like, they're like people that could see or what destroyed this world in the first place. Like oh, we're shit. better now. Yeah, it's I actually pretty it. good. Look, I have goosebumps a little bit just yeah. talking about it. I'm a huge Momoa fan. I'm not, uh, other yeah. than that, really. Like, I don't... He had this show called, uh, I think it's called Red Road. And it's about, like, uh, like, Native American, like, in rural East Coast, like, scenario. It's like a dude that used to be a criminal comes home, and the sheriff is married to his ex-girlfriend. And <laughs> it's like a whole deal. But it was very, like, it was it was a good show. But he made this movie long time ago, before he was popular at all, called The Road to Palomona. And it's like this sort of like kitschy, like B biker movie type deal about these two dudes that like kill somebody and they go on the run. And it was really, it's really well done. I like it a lot. I'm going to have to watch that C show. That sounds pretty good. There's a show I really dug, but they, they, I don't think they're ever going to make a second season called the peripheral on uh, Amazon. And it was like, uh, it had Chloe Grace Moretz, the, the little girl from kick-ass. Okay. It? But it's set in the future, but, like, there's a store where whatever you need, they just 3D print it there. All right. But it's about, like, it's like there's this game simulator, and they think they're controlling a game, but really they're controlling, like, a fucking Android body in the future. So it's like this weird time travel. It's fucking crazy. It's a hmm. crazy show, but it's really good. Yeah, that does because it's like good. time travel and AI and like I like stuff they're using like the that. internet. To, they're like we can use the internet to travel through time. That's how we're doing it because they're using like surrogate bodies to do it. Huh? It's fucking weird, dude. But it's cool. Yeah, that is pretty interesting. And like the whole Earl in the future, like the Earth is destroyed, but they have it. it, it envisioning it like you see it and you think there's all these people but it's all it's all fugazi like when they're in the future the people from the past like there's people everywhere and they think that it's like pop it's like no the world was destroyed there's barely any people left they're trying to stop it this war from happening hmm. so it's it's fucking crazy I, I like stuff like that futuristic type stuff yeah or like like black mirror is a good example or uh what's the one called uh love death and robots yeah, I've never seen that. Is it's that a good? Black Mirror and Love, Death, and Robots and Electric Dreams. And there's another one called Oats Studios. They're all the same in that every episode is a completely separate story. So cool. they're all like little, some of them are seven minutes long. Some of them are an hour and a half. Like, right. And they're all just separate little things. The Love, Death, and Robots is cool because each one is uh, different animators even. Oh, so there's cool. different styles of animation and stuff and 
Yeah, I like all of those things. There's uh, even Black Mirror. I mean, most of them are fine. And then a couple of them, you're like, holy fuck, dude. Like, that's crazy. You yeah, know what I mean? It's one of those shows that I've heard about for years. And then whenever I, it never pops in my brain when I'm like, what do I watch? What do I watch? What do I watch? And then it's like, I'll just watch this movie for the, I'll watch ready player one for the 200th time. <laughs> right. Cause you can't go wrong. I just watched oceans 11 the other day. I'm like, oh, why? Fuck. I'm like, I've seen this. The original I, or uh -huh. the, uh, the original. And then I started oceans 12 and I got about halfway through and I was like, wait, this is the one where fake Julia Roberts plays real Julia Roberts. Yeah. Like it just, is cringy. I didn't even finish that one, but now how wild is it that we're watching like, you know, they're remaking remakes. Yeah. Like Ocean's Eleven was like a Frank Sinatra movie or whatever. Right. And then so like that's acceptable. You made an acceptable you you've mo you made a modern version of that. But now Roadhouse. But then like, Ten years later, you made the same movie, but made it all ladies. And it's like, oh, well, yeah. Couldn't you have just at that point? I wonder if women ever go. Well, couldn't we have just wrote our own? Like, couldn't you have wrote a new one for us? Like, it's like uh, I see they they keep making like superheroes gay now, mm -hmm. and it's like, is it? Wouldn't it be more respectful to like make a new superhero that is gay instead of being like, nope, actually Spider Man's gay now, and it's like, well, <laughs> like, hold on, <laughs> like, can't there just be another one? Like. Yeah, the first thing I remember that that jumped out at me when you said that is uh, uh, Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Where the ladies all come together and they're like, we'll help her. Do you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, first of all, it's fucking, what's her name? Uh, Captain Marvel. It's like yeah. the most powerful person that you have here. In the whole thing. In yeah. the whole thing. And they're not, they're <laughs> what? They need fucking Natasha Romanoff with her stick to yeah. help her. <laughs> yeah. Like I, that. I, it literally made me go. Psh. Yeah. Like she doesn't. And the fact that it's just all chicks that I know that was thrown in and they were like, women can be superheroes, too. And it's like, yeah, I know I'm fine with that. But don't fucking act like it's because you're a woman that you're good. It's because you're a fucking superhero that you're good. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know. It's that, like all the, that shit the all lady me. Ghostbuster. Like, yeah, it's like, why did you? They just want to do everything like let's do this, but with chicks or in James a, or Bond, but like, with a chick. We're gonna do it, but everyone's gay, and it's like okay, can it just be normal? Where it's like, there's just yeah, there's gay people, there's straight people, there's men, there's women, like, but also write a new fucking movie. Yeah, like, we don't, we don't need. Well, every movie is the same. Yeah, it's like that's the Rick and Morty like wheel of. No, they are. So that's it's... why there's no purpose to like. Fuck, you don't have to. Don't call it Ghostbusters. Just make up a new thing. Yeah, uh, you know, because <laughs> we really like Ghostbusters. Like universally, I feel like Ghostbusters might be one of those movies that everybody's like, no, it fucking rules. Yeah, and like, Ghostbusters Two was even pretty yeah. good. Also, and the one that just came out that was like the fucking sequels what the the frozen something or other no there that's the newest one yeah. but the one the first one it's like paul rudd and like egon's oh. grandkids are the the main character that was the chick one though wasn't it or no no oh, no, no there's no, another no. one another one it's fucking rules dude huh it rules it's like they did it right they did it right but you yeah. also it's fucking ghostbusters when you got peter vinkman in there it's hard to you know right you can't go wrong with Bank. I think it's just part of the, what do they call it? The Overton window shifting or whatever. You know what I yeah. mean? Like what's acceptable for people in the, the Overton window never moves to the right. It just constantly moves to the left our whole lives, you yeah. know? So like when in the nineties or whatever, I remember people on TV being like, gay people should not get married. And well, even before the marriage thing, it was don't ask, don't tell like right. yet, yeah, do what you want. Don't fucking talk about it. Right. And that was fine with everybody for 10 years. And then it was like, all right, now you can tell people. Cause then Ellen came out and yeah. she was like, I'm gay and I'm proud. And everybody's like, well, we're gay and proud too. And we want to get married now. And, People on the right are like, all right, fine. You can talk about it. You're not fucking getting married. That's not what <laughs> married means. And then 10 years later, they're like, all right, you can get married, but, uh, you know, don't quit, quit dancing in front of our kids. And then yeah. 10 years from now, uh, who knows what things are going to be like. But 
it's just uh it's the as uh, what's his name adam carolla says it's the chickification of the world or yeah. it's like the pussification yeah of the world yeah it's weird uh, my thing here, here lately has been like just I'm just real wore out on like people telling me about their sexuality. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't care. Yeah. Like, well, even my, it's may, like, maybe my closest friends, I'd be like, tell me about this chick that you hooked up with. But right. If, if it's just some guy on the street with his girlfriend and he's like, I like to put my feet in her mouth and she likes to finger my Dude. butthole. I'm like, don't, that's none of my business. And ooh. And, and, and the whole umbrella of it. Like, I don't need to know. I don't, I, I, my, the pronouns are your, I, I just need to know your name and I'll call you by your name first yeah. and foremost. I don't care about the rest of that shit. Um, I don't need to know any, I don't need to know if you're queer. I don't care. I, if that doesn't, that's not how I judge people on if I like you or not. Like, right. It's like, I'm so tired of people being like, I'm a comic and I'm queer. So you, you have to like me because it's like, well, you're not good though. Like if you're not funny and they're like, what do you hate queer people? It's like, no, no I, I, I hate, I hate shitty bad comics. comedy, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, and it's true for anything. And I use this example to some friends where I was like, imagine if I was like, I'm the non-binary car builder and that's why you will like me. You ha you can't hate me because I'm the non-binary car builder. It means why I could build the shittiest cars in the world because it's all art. So it's objective. It makes me wonder, like, are people just so desperate to be different? Yeah. Like back in the day, people just you just went and got a little hair dye. You know, maybe you got a mohawk. Yeah, got that your ear pierced. You, different. you got an ear piercing. Ripped your jeans or something. Yeah, I did all that. Like, it's just odd. And and I have a teenage daughter, so I'm watching as like, you know, we're kind of in the hood here. You know what I mean? And they like her school's a little rougher, but like that, that they don't do that shit at that school. You know what I mean? So yeah. It's like whoa. It's like totally different. Like sometimes my kid says shit where I'm like, yeah, dude, that seems a little. That might be a little far. Like you might say some things are a little hateful, but like, it's okay. Like just chill out a little. But it's wild. It's wild to watch the kids. Yeah. See that. Like, cause it was crazy for me when I was a kid to go to a school with like the Nazi punks fuck off logo. You know what I mean? From dead Kennedy's. And it was like, you're fucking suspended, mister. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I actually, we, we didn't have Nazi people. I don't think if we did, I didn't know any of them. We had, there were, uh, you know, the alternative kids. We called them the freaks. They yeah. called themselves the freaks, basically, you know, like, so, and they all sat together. They all wore black. They all had pantyhose, like, on their hands oh, with yeah. finger holes cut out and shit. And and I when I started doing theater and stuff, like, my sophomore year, it was, like, half freaks yeah. doing theater shit and i was That's just like old. man you guys are fucking funny and like you're cool and shit yeah and, and i i didn't have anybody have to tell me like you would need to accept this group you know it's just we were placed together and we ended up having stuff in common and yeah i was like theater's fucking cool the freak kids are cool and then i kind of became that guy like my senior year where people were like you going with the freaks and i'm like they're not freaks you guys like they're cool people like, you know we see you wearing those fishnets now mike <laughs> like, leave me alone dude i never jumped that far <laughs> into it but like my sister is only five or six years older than me and i remember when i was in grade school and she was a junior or senior and would have parties and all of her friends they all had fucking cowboy hats on and boots and shit and by the time i got to high school there wasn't a single cowboy hat in my school and we yeah. went to the same school you know yeah it's just the weird phases that that people go through and when we were uh i graduated in 02 i'm from bonner springs okay and uh me and like three of my friends we were like the punk kids and then there was like the Christian punk kids and, and they were all like the nerdy. They were also the nerds. So I was cool with all of them, but all the fucking jock kids and gangsters called us Woodstockers and we fucking hated it. We're, like, <laughs> we're not fucking hippies, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> the Woodstockers. Those are the other kids. We ride skateboards and we have fucking spiky hair, man. Yeah. We listen to Rancid. We're cool. 
it's fun the things that you look back on now that you're like oh yeah none of that mattered no none of it it was like the most important thing in my life at the time and i'm like oh yeah no i i should have been nicer to fucking whatever his name was that sat next to me in math but i wasn't because he wasn't cool you know yeah looking back now it's like i don't know he was he's always said funny things and stuff like i should have been nicer to that kid yeah we were always uncool so it was easy for us to just like you know be cool i guess right. i guess when you're un when you're uncool really is when you're the coolest yeah you we learned I mean? that too i remember one of the band kids came to a party once and uh and could chug a pitcher of beer like non-stop <laughs> in a few seconds and we were just like what are they teaching you in band like are we running behind no, you're, good. Or? you're good i, I just don't want to you know, I, the last thing we need is for this to... These things tend to get away from you sometimes. Uh-huh. Old John Cheeser would be calling me like, where the fuck are you doing? What are you guys doing? We're like, we're having the show here now, dude. Yeah, dude. Well, live, I'll hit the live button. You guys can... Michael, just do a few jokes from the, from the studio. From the chair? <laughs> yeah. That would be cool to just do sit-down comedy. Oh, man. that's a, we John and I have been trying to figure out some sort of a live show we can... Like, do, we can... Because I do some streaming stuff that we can, like, coming up with, like, a fun idea... Of like something we can do, yeah. So people aren't burning their jokes, but also like, uh, mm. you know, some people are concerned about that. Yeah, I'm but not these same at all, people. But... No, I know you're not. Um, because you also have the internet, and so do all of them. Where what do they do? Uh, post all their fucking jokes up all the time. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, dude, you put jokes up on the internet all the time. Like, just you can do whatever. Also, just fuck around. Like, we'll figure. We're trying to come up with some fun thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, you could do some kind of game show or something, or or just yeah, some Davey, kind of like word game uh, or something. Uh, Wester, Davy Wester was on. I don't know if you know him. He's somebody at John's. Like this dude with cerebral palsy from the. He's from Washington. He's he's cool. He's funny. Sounds hilarious. Yeah, he is actually. He's like this redneck dude with I'm cerebral sure palsy. He just, that, like does comedy, so it's like a all weird I knew thing, about you know? him was cerebral palsy, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. that sounds funny. Uh but he was like, why don't you guys just make it a thing where people o- can only do crowd work and then just invite the most fucked up people, you know, to be in the crowd. And I was like, well, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not a bad idea. You come in and it's like only crippled people one time. <laughs> like, you just oh, set it God. up like that where it's like, OK, how do you do this? <laughs> like. Yeah, I mean, I could see that working, but then I could also see, see it, it going horribly failing. bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like anything else, you know, got to try it. Yeah. But I don't know. It's uh, there's no perfect way to do anything. No, even comedy shows. I mean, I've seen tons of comedy shows in my life where every single comedian just has a terrible night. Right. And every person in the audience is like, that wasn't funny. And it's like, dude, that dude said that same shit last night and got a standing ovation. Yeah. 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 There's just something about a weird crowd. A weird crowd throws everybody off. Dude, sometimes I'll put up a video and people will love it. And sometimes you're just like, yeah, nobody's watching this one. Yeah. Just and, when, and when I put up one that does really well, I'm like, oh, I get it now. I understand the secret. Yeah. I'll <laughs> recreate this for the next one. And then it gets nothing. And I'm like, all right, well, that wasn't the fucking secret, I guess. I've listened to no less than 200 hours of people swearing if you do this thing, this thing, this thing to your videos, and I'm sure you have two on YouTube. Absolutely. Because it's yeah. just like a fucking fight to get anywhere. But it's not because of um, any of that. It's simply because of in you have to bring the people to you to a point. Mm-hmm. Then when you get to that point, I feel like YouTube probably pushes your shit a little more because it's they're like, oh, this we can probably make money off of. Right. And up until that point, you're just sucking them for money. So, like, I notice, like, a lot of people get stuck around a certain level. And I'm sort of at one of those lulls right now where I'm like, okay, I just need to get, if we can just get right past this thing, uh-huh. if we can get just a little bit farther, we might be, we might be all right, you know? But, I mean, yeah, you, you got your channel. I mean, you got some good shit on there. Your, Thanks on your YouTube. I was watching that earlier, and then your special. Where's tell everybody the special is called the way the, the hundred percent. It's way. called number one top selling best comedy special ever. Yes, and it's on. 
It's on YouTube. Uh, you can go to MikeIsFunny.com, and it's the at the very top of the page. I cool. I embedded it I think into it's my website. Eight, what's the, it's 800 Pound Gorilla 800 is the pound company gorilla. that, that yeah. did it. They produced it or or whatever the word is. Or no, it, technically, I'm the executive producer because right. I they were like... Uh, Tell us, uh, you know, your special thanks or whatever you want at the end of the credits. And I was like, oh, thank Dustin Kaufman at the club. Yeah. Thank the club and the staff and stuff. And and then my friend Fraser loaned me a shirt to wear that night. And I was like, and and put a wardrobe next to my friend Fraser's name because he'll be excited about that. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, what was the point of that? Oh, yeah. And I was like, is there like an executive producer or anything? And they were like, no, not for something like this. Like, do you even know what an executive producer does? And I was like, no, but if there's not one, I want to be it. So I was like, put me on there as executive producer and so that's what it says i uh yeah it's i i had a similar thing with credits where i was on a a shop i worked at had a discovery channel show and i couldn't be on it because they just busted some discovery channel star for being like a pedo or something and they're like no more felons there's like a top-down memo no felons on the network anymore and i i was on parole uh. <laughs> so they're like yeah no dude but uh I had made an arra- a deal with them and the deal was like they were supposed I wouldn't come after them if there happened to be like a shot of my hands or like some weird like if I was in the background yeah. or anything but they were supposed to uh, give me a credit as the uh conservator of cool that was my supposed to be my credit and they didn't fucking do it in the long oh, run. Like, no. You bastards. Like I just Were you that. in? Did you see your hand in it uh, anywhere? My hands were in like one scene, but it was like this weird deal where like I did all the work on these cars and they made it look like other people did it. So right. I'm like pretty spiteful about the whole situation. I would it be fucking too. sucked. Watching that, I was like, this is the phoniest shit I've, I've ever I've been heard a part that of. same thing about uh Pimp My Ride. Yeah. Where they're like, This is so and so, the owner of whatever place, like he's gonna fix your car up. And it's that like, guy's yeah. like, Yeah, I'm not doing doing any of that i'm hiring 10 other guys 10 other guys that don't real that are just dudes that have their own shop that came here for a week and and that aren't good on camera all of those cars specifically were like horribly built notorious they're like notorious in the car culture for being like if you can find one they're like the worst fucking things in the world. The pet my ride. Cars. Yeah, they're just all well, hacked together. Because well, they weren't they weren't like, running well in the beginning anyway. Well, but they would like put all those TVs and shit in them. Yeah. And then they would take all that shit out and give the car back to people. They would just give you this fucked up car back. And you'd be like, wait, what? This is not oh how it's supposed to go. You know, it's supposed to be get my ride. But there's there's a couple guys on YouTube that go around looking for them and they'll find because there's so many of them. Because they made so many. They fucking did that show for like five to ten years. And everyone is just like, yeah, everyone they, is they just fucked a hack my job. car. It's just a hack job, dude. Yeah, like it seems like a better show would just be buy me a new car. Yeah. Hey, just buy me a car. Man. They're like, we're putting 10 grand of TVs in here. And it's like, why don't you just give me a fucking 10, Nissan Sentra? Buy me a 98 for, camera. You're right. Nicer exactly. than what I got. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking wild, man. TV is a weird thing, too. I feel like reality television's on the comeback. I don't scary. I wanted to see if there's. I made notes earlier because I was like, tell them about. Oh, uh, so we the eight hundred pound gorilla, dude. But your special, I saw. Fuck, man, it looks like it's doing really well. Like that's cool. It it got over a hundred thousand. It's yeah. still not the you know twenty million that I hoped for by this point. But yeah, it came out in December, so it's got you know twenty five grand a month or so. Yeah. People watching it, and it's still going up by a thousand or so every day, and that's fucking rules. So I know people are watching it. And Better sharing than David and Cross's special, I noticed. So that's got to be number wise. Yeah, yeah. That's, I, I, that's something to be proud. of. That made me proud too. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's it's at that level where like it it's it's something that I can use to get bookers to listen to me a little bit, right. you know, Hey, you know, I got a hundred K on, but it still, it didn't transfer because the company that did it, put it on their YouTube as opposed to my YouTube. Right. I'm not gaining subscribers from it or anything like that. You know, it's, yeah. I wonder, they, do they let you have any clips of it at all? Or? Oh yeah. Okay. That, and that's what I've gotten a, a, a lot of traction from or whatever, Reddit, especially like I don't use, or I hadn't used Reddit in years. Um, and I decided like, all right, I'll throw a clip up on Reddit and it got fucking 20,000 upvotes in 24 hours, like front page of the internet. And I got, 
I probably sold a hundred sh- shirts off my website and just oh, got sick. like donations and stuff from people. One dude gave me 500 bucks just cause he was like, you're funny dude. And I was like, Holy fuck, man. Yeah. So that was really cool. That rules. Um, yeah. The clips have done easily better than the entire special. Right. But it's still, and on Reddit, you can't say this is from my special. Here's a link. Cause they won't let you do self promotion. So it's like, all right, enjoy this clip, and then there's nothing I can do about it. Like, yeah. even if you put your website in the video, they're like, self-promotion, deleted. Yeah. So they're they're strict on the rules and yeah. stuff. But Reddit's a weird place. Oh, it really is. Yeah. It's fun, though, sometimes. Like, but I don't like to get on there to read about politics or, no, yeah. or it, any, like, current affairs sort of stuff, but just generic entertainment. Yeah. Is Reddit is good for that. Yeah, memes. Probably good for memes. Yeah. I I tend to only look at Reddit when it comes to I'm when I'm in search of weird technical car data. Yeah. And so this week that really did help me out of my I got this old Dodge van out back that I've been working on getting it running again. It's like And you found somebody yeah, on I found there. some weirdo that just What kind of Dodge van? A seventy eight Dodge B one hundred. Uh I it's had a, uh, a 93 Dodge Caravan for years. Oh, I have a buddy that was a caravan guy. Put over 300,000 miles on that puppy. Drove her all over the country. Yeah. Oh, all over. Took the seats out of the back. I made it like my living space. I'd yeah. sleep back there and shit. Yeah. That was fun. Caravans are fucked, dude. They run forever. The passenger door wouldn't uh, close, so it, something was wrong with the latch or whatever. So to remedy that, my dad took this wire stuff and wired the door to the car. So instead of it not being able to close, his solution was make make it just never open. Yeah. Yeah. So more than once I had skeptical girls be like, I don't know if I want to get in here. Yeah. Cause I'm like, no, you open the sliding door in the back, you climb around and then you sit and she's like, and then I'm just wired in. Like, yeah, it was uh, not good for I that. I swapped but. the doors, and I don't have a door key. I still got to take the locks out of the old doors. And so now if I lock it in the city, I can get in the side doors all. So people see me, and I go to the side door and open it up and close it, and then go sit down. They're like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm like, that's <laughs> the only door I got to keep you, dude. <laughs> like, if this lock fucks up, I'm screwed, man. Oh, God. I watched a guy the other day. I was standing outside smoking a cigarette, and... Uh, I got to watch, it was in a tiny car and he was a big dude and his driver's door didn't work apparently because he parked and then crawled his way oh from driver's God. seat to passenger seat and then got out, went into a restaurant, got us to go order and then got back in the passenger climbed seat, the- climbed back over and At then that left. It's like, dude, maybe don't get takeout if your car door doesn't work. I thought several things. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Like, that's crazy, man. But that's also something I would have done back in the day. Like, oh, when yeah. I was on drugs. I was like, I never had tags. I don't know how many times I got arrested just because I didn't have tags. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck, dude. If I just, if I'd have just not bought those drugs last week, I probably could have fucking bought some tags. Yeah, but drugs are more fun than tags. I, when you're 24, they definitely are. Yeah. For sure. Those were good phases. I yeah. got, I say I got lucky, but obviously it was terrible. But I had a, a close friend of mine. His name was Brian Jonas. And when, he died when I was like 23. When he was 23, I was probably 22. Of uh, He OD'd oh. on Oxycontin. So, th- and then all a bunch of our friends and stuff were still doing it afterwards. Right. You know? And that it just the whole situation made me be like, well, I'm never fucking doing any of that stuff. So I I say I got kind of lucky because I skipped a whole drug as far as doing pharmaceuticals and stuff. I went through a meth phase when I was like 15. I went through a coke phase when I was like 19. And then all the Jonah stuff happened. And I was like, I'm not going through a fucking pill phase. So, yeah. and looking back, it probably, I don't know if it saved my life, but it definitely made me not become a fuck up. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I didn't do even smoke weed till I was, I drank a few times before I was 21. I drank. Yeah. And then right before we were 21, we used to go to this biker bar in the town we're from because my mom would eat lunch there every day because she worked up the street. And so one night, my buddy had a house down the street with his brother. I was like, dude, either they're going to serve us or they're going to tell us to get fucked. 
And you're like, but dude, and I was like, but think about it. What moron goes to the restaurant that their mom eats at every day and drinks underage? And they're in the, whatever that logic was, they were like, you're, it's, this is fucking genius. <laughs> we were like 18, 19. We go in there. They served us. Now, years later, I realized that they were like, no, we just knew you idiots were going to drink wherever you, with, here or not. Right. So we just knew better keep an eye on you. And then it was like later, years later, we, they're like, yeah, we only gave you draft beer. We only let you have like three or four beers each and you couldn't have any liquor. And then we also never charged you. We just made other people buy the beers for you so hmm. we wouldn't get in trouble. I was like, holy fuck, man. You guys really had this you all worked out. You guys had a whole plan. Yeah, I thought I was really fucking smart. You guys just <laughs> ruined all that for me. Yep, I definitely drank underage. And yeah, uh, yeah but being from Independence, meth was around oh, when sure. I was 15. So it was just another like, oh, you going to a party? Here, try some of this. Try some and of this crystal. It, and then it was like, wow, this is great. This is a great party. Yeah, that's back when the bike clubs were real huge out there too. Mm-hmm. That's wild shit, man. What um, what you got any dates coming up? You want to pimp out? Uh, yeah, I'm heading to a chick's house tomorrow. Uh, Sick. Oh, you met. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, I've got. Uh, well, I'm doing like a country club gig in Oklahoma City on Saturday. Sick. I don't know if it's a public thing or not, so I don't know whether to brag about it or tell people but i am working about it i'm working i'm working like hey i'd brag all about it. like yeah these rich people are paying me a lot of money to come to their country club i've got uh i'm heading to arizona on the uh, 20th of march i'm um, doing a few casinos in random arizona places and then i'm doing a weekend at uh, jp's comedy club in gilbert arizona which is a great tiny little room and holds like 75 people Every show is sold out, like, because it, it's easy to sell out a small room, right. you know. And just all the other comics there are so cool, and the owner is cool, and his wife is cool. Like, everything about it is is uh, chill. Yeah, fun. yeah. Plus, it's the it's this time of year where it's like not gonna be a thousand degrees there. It'll yeah. be like ninety, maybe. You yeah. know. So yeah, my yeah. aunt lives out in Arizona. My sister and her family live there too, so that's a, another reason why I'm excited because I get to go visit them and my, my yeah. nieces and stuff, and so that'll be fun. Um, I don't know what else I got. Not enough. I know that. Like, I've tried. To, to, I used to just go on the road for a month or two, you know, and yeah. and sleep in my car on off nights and do weird Tuesday gigs like I'm doing tonight and stuff like that, and now. Uh, you know that i'm in wichita and whatnot i try to just do a weekend and then back home or yeah or plan ahead really well if i am going to be gone for a week or two and so yeah it's not it's it's been a, a different than the last few years but I'm still working yeah it all it all works out in the end you yep. know what i mean the road takes you down where it goes plus i'm making good grandma memories that yeah will stay yeah, with yeah. me for a lifetime I, you know my grandma the one that just passed away, I had spent a lot of my youth with her. And then the one that passed away at the end of summer, when I got out of jail, her and my grandpa were living with my parents. So I saw them every day. Mm. So it was like a thing where it's like, same thing. I had all these, like, you know, it was like a, when you're with them every day, it's like, yeah, okay. Well, they were, it was their time. They're, you know, they were getting up there. Yeah. She was in a nursing home for a year. Couldn't lift her head up. Like, mm fucking you don't want to see people like that you know? no you don't grandpa's still going strong one left grandpa fred he was the one that used to hang out down the street He's yeah 92 i think and just fred's are tough bastards yeah fred is a tough bastard man. that's like the whole like boy named sue sort of thing that's yeah. like fred now it's like your name's fucking fred not frederick just fred yeah you know what i mean but uh dude thanks for coming over i was fucking is it Great to, is it I, done? I think we might. I mean, what do we got? It's it's pushing seven o'clock. Because if you're gonna get coffee, do we shit. do this on camera? Oh, we can. Thanks, I'll man. No, thank you, dude. I uh, guys, I'll I'll put I'll link all. Yeah, it's your all socials. right here. Yeah, do you it's do, all right here. Do you add stuff? Um, I check me out. Here's, I haven't here's got my that, body. That, the whole whip yet. I always put it in the comments. Uh, I've okay. become pretty good at like uh, I try to like when I find like here lately i've realized like yo share the things that you like 
it's that simple, right? Mm-hmm. Like when I see if I when I if I see a real pop up of yours and I think it's funny, then I can hit the little arrow on Instagram and go boom, put it to my stories, let these people know. And I've been trying to get very good about that. And that came from like when I have people on, I like to put your like in the comments, I'll put your social media, I'll put the link to your special in there, the link to your YouTube channel. Like when I post stuff on Instagram now, I'll invite you as a collaborator so it, because I, uh, I get the clips made, you yeah, know? Yeah. So that way it goes on your page and my page. Nice. So we both get the benefit of it being up. You and know? what's the benefit exactly on you on Instagram? Um, well, I make sure that like because they see that and then they if you go to my Instagram, you see like, oh, go to the YouTube. No, page. but I mean like I'm just speaking broadly, like oh, so it's what like, do we get from getting a million views on Instagram? Yeah, Fucking um, nothing, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean I'm Fucking, I'm monetized you, uh, by Facebook, okay. which I'll turn you on to that because you should. I mean, I think I am too. I just it doesn't my, pay a whole lot. No, but I, it. Um, I had a friend, uh, Josh Springer, who's from the Indianapolis area, who's also the inventor of a of a weird beer device called Bottoms Up. I don't yeah. know if you've ever heard of that, uh-uh. where like the beer fills in from the bottom of the cup, oh, and then they put a little magnet over the bottom, and uh, I don't. Uh, it's neat. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, he posted a thing with, uh, this was right after, a, a, one of the big wildfires somewhere and, and then the laser theories were going around and right. so he was in this big warehouse thing and he had a laser and he made a little cardboard house and a little cardboard palm tree or whatever. <laughs> and he was like, they say that it's lasers. You can't do that. And he like shoots the laser at the stuff and it just whoosh, all yeah. goes up in flames. And he's like, Oh fuck. And it was supposed to be a joke, you know, like, right. uh, so I shared that it got fuck five million views or whatever. I got like four hundred bucks from Facebook, and then they fucking deleted my page and made me go in and delete it before they would give me my page back. Yeah, but I was like, "But you paid me!" Like, yeah, none of it made sense to me. Anyway, it doesn't make sense. Now, there's also a thing where like they were supposed to give me money, but they won't confirm my identity right now. They're like, "This is it. That's not good enough." And I'm like, "Wait, what?" Like. You sent me this letter. You told me to enter this code and you have my ID. And like, they're like, yeah, we just, we don't know. And I'm like, I feel like you're just trying not to give me, I was like, how about if you just give me store credit and I'll buy ads on Facebook? Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, just let me do that. It's just like a weird thing. Store but. credit. Yeah. Store credit. It's all fucked. We used to, in high school, we would skip school, me and my friend Mark, and we would go to Walmart and we would find an expensive item, take it to the lawn and garden section that's surrounded by fence. Right. We would lift the fence up a little bit, shove the item out, walk out of Walmart, go pick up the item, walk back in Walmart and return it for store credit. Oh, that's some, that's, that's definitely a methamphetamine fuel. It was. Right there. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. And, but that, it, they're still practicing that at every one, the Walmart on 40 highway. I believe they still, they practice still practice that. that. They're still practicing that technique. See, I, I thought it was I, like they wised up since nah. then. A, a old comedian friend of mine named Scott used to have a joke about taking a, like a refrigerator box to Walmart and being like, I got it home. Weren't no fridge in there. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, let us give you another one, sir. Yeah. And he's like, hell yeah. Two fridge fridge box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Same thing. You do the TV, put the broken TV in there. But it was fucking broken when I opened the box. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but now it doesn't... Now that's why it, they want you to buy the... Now they'd be like, you didn't buy the warranty, sir, so we can't fucking... Yeah, or they've got, like, the barcode on the TV, and they're yeah. like, the, the TV barcode does not match the box barcode. Yeah, and you're like, and oh, this fuck, was you guys thought of everything. Anyway, you got it all. <laughs> you fucking found us out. But yeah, I'm just, like, be, trying to be better about, like, oh, I think this is good shit, like, in putting it out to the people that... Well, I hope that, see my shit. I hope you know this I mean? gets put out to the people, and I hope they love everything about both of us. Well, a lot of them hate me, I think, but but they it ha- works out the same for me. Do they the watch end. you because they hate you? I, some of them, yeah. That's like which the, is yeah. So that's the Fox it, News audience. It, it, sort it doesn't of matter if they love you or hate. It doesn't matter if you're right. the heel or the fucking. Um, They're like we the gotta turn face, this, this like, idiot on. So yeah, we, can, we gotta look, see, look at what this son fucking of a bitch idiot is saying. Is saying. Yeah, um, but either way, you know, it's love me or I'm just doing this because I like to do it. Yeah. If well, I could turn this into, uh, you know, money, not necessarily uh, 
in the vein of like what you've got going on, if I ever had the opportunity to be like, I could do what I love and get by. Right. I would be okay with that as opposed to like having my soul sucked out every day, going to work for somebody who really just could care less who the person feeling my position was. You yeah, know? that's true. So it just, fucking... but I, I feel the same about audience members or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, you're just random people to me. Like, I don't, yeah. Like you could easily be replaced, all of you. Yeah. And especially when people get kicked out and stuff. Like, well, you don't want my support. And I'm like, there's so many people that support me that don't get kicked out for yelling shit. Like, yeah. so yes, I'll take someone yes, else. Yes, in one hour, this room will be filled back up from the beginning as we go. But Show that's number how every, two tonight. That's how like, every so, yeah, job is, like, you yeah. know. It's like I you know, I'm the best gas station attendant that you've ever had working here. And the owner's like, dude, I can find somebody equal to or better than you in a day. Yeah. I have a skilled well, the skilled trade I'm in is like becoming very scarce. So I am very fast at what I do. So it like So you're me- moving up. Well, it, yes, I've been able, last year was the best year I've ever had in the body trade, and I've been doing it my whole life, but uh, it's a, it allows, it's the only safety net I have for my fil- my zero filter of telling people to get the fuck out of my face. Like, <laughs> right. I like to tell people to fuck off And they're like, you're lot. out of here, buddy, and yeah, you're like, My landlord right. tried to threaten me last night. He's like, you're in violation of your lease. I'm like, okay, what, and? what? <laughs> you're in violation of my lease. Like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> what is that, a threat? Cool. I don't care, man. I've I've like sort of like I'll deal with the consequences. You eh. know what I mean? Odds are there probably won't even be any. No, he can't find. He can't. He doesn't have anybody else that pays the rent on time. No questions asked. And what violates your year. lease? Uh, uh, or is that nobody's business? Uh oh, uh, because we were on the third hot water heater, and the guy like there's a garage door right there. Yeah. So. You just run a hose out. I helped the maintenance man do it twice. Then they hired a plumber. And the guy decides he's there's a floor drain over there this big that was surrounded by carpet and some of my shit. And he just opened the water heater up over there, mm. trying to shoot it into a hole in the ground and just flooded. That's why the floor is so clean, because the plumber was just flooding the basement. And I had to huh. clean it all up. And I'm like, what are you fucking doing, you idiot? And the guy's like, fuck you. I don't work here. I'll fuck you. I'm like, oh, okay, fuck me. I'll put the water heater in myself, dog. I don't care. And did you? No, the guy, uh, they made the guy come back because he unhooked it. But Mm. then they had an electrician out here and the electrician's telling me, oh, there's nothing wrong. And then I call an electrician that I know and I'm explaining to him over the phone what's happening. And he's He's like, like, oh, "Oh, yeah, that's wrong. Wrong circuit breaker. (laughs) I was like, oh, okay." He's like. He's like, open the book. And I opened the book. He's like, do you see the graph? He's like, yeah. He's like, you see where it says. 35 am- or 30 amp i'm like yeah he's like you got a 40 dude you keep blowing them up and i'm like okay i told the landlord that and he was just like yeah no that's not a real thing i was like, okay hmm. so when this one blows up this week i've gotten two hot showers in now so that's bonus for me i went a week without a shower because i didn't have any hot water i was just hooker bathing it upstairs yeah I was listening on the way down here. I was listening to a book called One Second After. Have you heard of that? Uh uh-uh. It's about a EMP going off over the United States and just power going out for oh, everybody. Shit. And uh, yeah, they they go from well, there's no electricity, but the water's still running for now because right. a lot of it's just run on gravity, you know. Right. And uh, so just cold showers for the first month or whatever, and then one day just no more water either. Yeah. Like, and so then it gets to the point of the story for me was uh, just how bad everybody stunk in yeah. the 1500s or whatever. Like, it, and you can even find like old art and stuff that just shows rich people like holding like perfume rags up to their nose because just everywhere stunk. Yeah. Fucking horse shit all over the streets. People just walking through people it. People shitting on the street. People shitting. Nobody's bathing or showering or Nobody anything. Nobody had toilet paper. People would put on their, that's, this is a quote from the book, they would put on their long johns at the beginning of winter and then not take them off until spring. Yeah. Like no bath in the middle, no washing your shit. Just, oh, dude. Yeah, it's just terrible to think about. And then I'd forget deodorant one day and I'm like, oh my God, what's the world going to think? 
Anyway, I got to pee. Are we? Yeah, let's do that. Let's get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Go follow Mike's shit. If you get a chance, see him do stand up. We'll see you next time. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out one of these other videos. We'll see you next time.